Miami Dolphins insider David Veronis. Right, right, right. Uh, how you doing, my man? You doing good? I'm doing well. Holding up over here. A uh, busy week all last week, and uh, and then even uh, through the through the weekend and and uh, early this week, got some restructures getting done. So cap space, all the cap uh, gymnastics, uh, aerobics that the Dolphins have to work through, and, um, and and meeting some of these players too. A lot of interviews we had yesterday. Yeah, yeah. No, I saw a lot of the interviews yesterday, and. I like a lot of the guys they brought in, man. I, I, uh, I, um, I think it's uh, a lot of character guys. They brought in uh, a lot of uh, workers, uh, a lot of guys that are support players, and I think it's something that was needed on this team uh, because you you just can't be top heavy, and maybe that's what the Dolphins were a little too much. They were a little too top heavy. Now you still have your stars. Uh, but now you've got maybe more supporting players, and maybe that brings a little bit more balance you know, to what you need. In the end, you're still going to need Chubb and Phillips to get back because those are two key stars that you have to have back. But if you once you do get them back, you might have a more well-rounded roster, actually. Yeah, yeah, you need both, right? You need the, the top heavy. You need your stars at the top, of course. But then you need a balanced roster as well. So uh, that, that's what a real contender is. That's how you find it. And uh, you talk about the character uh, leadership that this team is is bringing in. Uh, we were talking about Jordan Brooks and how impressed we were watching his interview. Uh, and, and he's one of the guys that, uh, aside from him, there are so many guys that were captains at their previous spot. And I, I think right. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think he was even one of them. So I know that a lot of the if you look at pictures of, of these guys with their past teams, whether it's Poyer, whether it's Anthony Walker and uh, at least someone of Kendall Fuller also, all of them had C's on their chest uh, from from their previous destination. So a lot of previous captaincy that uh, now I mean, even Jordan Brooks, who maybe wasn't in Seattle, but we kind of see those qualities in him as a fifth year player changing team. So uh, I think that's something that they're looking for when they find these guys is, is the type of character that they're bringing in to the organization. Yeah. And, and to me, it's what I've been explaining. Look, they made a decision. This wave of players to them is not as important as the next wave of players. They can't sign them all. So, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, I still have people, oh, we shouldn't let Wilkins go. And I said, well, if you sign Wilkins, what if that ended up costing you Holland next year? What if that ended up costing you Waddle next year? What if that ends up costing you Phillips next year? What if that ends up costing you another player that's actually really important? And, you know, and then some of them would say, well, no, I still rather have Wilkins. And then some say, oh, okay, I understand. But to me, that's what's pretty obvious where they said, okay, you know, we, we've, we, th- here's the wave of picks that we hit on. Well, we, we're going to have to make the tough decision of focusing on the next wave of players, not this wave of players. And then, you know, now we're going to have a little bit more flexibility after that because the following two years, you didn't have a ton of draft picks. Yeah, I think you operate with that understanding that when you do stack your roster over uh, several drafts, that you're not going to be able to keep everyone that that you once had. Like the Patriots for 20 years, they didn't sustain su- success by just keeping all their players that they hit on. They uh, had to oh. let guys go. Always were bringing in new guys through the draft. So um, that is how you sustain success in the NFL is always bringing in the next group of guys. So uh, the Dolphins had a lot of decisions to make and and certainly the future decisions in, in the next couple of years uh, played into who they decided they could or couldn't bring back in this offseason. So it certainly hurts at times. I mean, I don't think the Dolphins were, were going to be paying anything near what Christian Wilkins got, what Robert Hunt got, but uh, Andrew Van Ginkle, it hurt to see him go, especially given that Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb are coming off their injuries. But like Shaq Barrett, he's a veteran that you could get uh, after, although he hasn't produced as much in the last couple of years as he has the years prior to that and when he was helping the Bucks get to that 2020 Super Bowl. But uh, still a veteran that you could try to bring that back out of. And then he's a guy yeah. that if someone, if one of those guys, Phillips and Chubb, they're still on the PUP to start, he can start for the uh, at the beginning of the season and then he can be part of this rotation. It's really going to be a monster if all of them are healthy at the same time. Right. And I, I, I tweeted that out yesterday that if you if, of course, it's an if, you know, you got to get Chubb and Phillips back. But if they get back by the end of the season, 
maybe you start seeing Phillips and Chubb kind of themselves. And with Shaq, that'll be a nice rotation, man. That'll be a that'll be something, and, and it'll help you know Phillips and Chubb to have him there, part of that rotation, and maybe you can you know unload some of that uh, some of the uh, the reps too at the same time. And and listen, the unknown is also there. There might be somebody there that might be developing that might end up becoming that fourth guy that we didn't count on also. And that's the other thing that we have to leave open. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of unknown about how much better they could be this year or worse. Who knows? Yeah. Right. And you have to leave it open to uh, the possibility of an edge rusher in the first or second round with those draft picks that, that they have. Um, and maybe even if there's a, some trade, some maneuvering where they add some draft capital and and, uh, and you can afford yourself uh, maybe alignment with an edge rusher or if you're looking for a receiver, uh, whatever the case uh, may be. So, um, yeah, it, it'll be a really nice rotation, especially what you mentioned with the uh, with the distribution of reps and snaps so that coming off their, their injuries, their respective injuries for Phillips and Chubb, maybe they don't have to have that big of a workload where, you know, you, you normally wouldn't want to see them get off the field at all, but you can sort of ease them into a greater snap count week to week as they do progress throughout the season. Uh, and then a guy like Shaq Barrett really affords you that possibility. All right. Uh, Jack Driscoll was added yesterday. Um, you tell me, what does this mean for Kendall Lamb? Yeah, I'm wondering the same thing because uh, Jack Driscoll is predominantly a tackle. So you think of him as that predominantly uh, swing tackle. He can play both the left and right tackle spots, but he also has uh, experience at guard. So very versatile lineman. But uh, it's telling, though, that uh, Kendall Lamb is has not had that situation settled and uh and then jack driscoll has been brought in from the outside so uh which was interesting because last year kendall lamb was at the top of the list he was a he was a first day of free agency that they settled that and brought him back even when he was just oh, he was about a radar month, uh with the team from right yeah oh still on the radar. Oh, yeah at yeah that point, he had not played like he played last year and so now his value obviously has gone up especially to the dolphins because that's the other thing he might be a free agent, but other teams might say, yeah, he may not fit our system nearly as well or whatever because he's bounced around the league. And so he only had success here for this one season. So it's kind of hard to sell to other teams. So, you know, Miami still, I think, has a chance at bringing him back because other teams may look at it like maybe he doesn't play as well in our system like he did with them. There, did we lose him? I lost you. Uh, I lost you there for for a little bit, but but I got bits and pieces of what you were saying. The the value of Kendall Lamb. Yeah, like like right now, Kendall is really important to the Dolphins, but another team may not look at him the same way, and so maybe that's why he's still kind of out there in free agency because we're seeing the second and second wave of linemen signing now, and he's not one of them so far. So you wonder. Is he having trouble getting the price that he wants after the year he had? And I know he's towards the back end of his career, so he's trying to make as much as he can. Yeah, yeah, that, there's that right. I mean, he this is a, a very important free agency for himself because of, of where he stands, his age. Um, and, and I remember sort of the uh, reputation he had like uh, January 1st of 20 – of uh, the, the season before when they were playing the Patriots at New England, Kendall Lamb had to start in that game. And I remember uh, sort of um, some of the other media, you know, not, not the Dolphins beat reporters, but other guys, whether they were national guys or, or maybe Patriots writers uh, saying, Oh, Kendall Lamb is starting. Well, you know, then whatever they knew about him from before, they thought, Oh, well, the Patriots are going to feast against him. And he was right. holding up pretty well. Uh, he got injured in that game, I, I think, or was it the other way? Did he have to go in for someone else? No, I think, no, he was in for Armstead, and then he also got injured. Yes. But uh, but but he was holding up uh, uh, fairly well. And then it was telling how the Dolphins prioritize him in the next uh, free agency, sort of like, hey, you know, we know what we got here. And then, yes, he definitely did boost his stock with uh, how he was able to fill in for Armstead uh, pretty consistently and uh, during multiple stints in the past season. So, uh, But still, uh, he's, he's still out there. So – um, still a situation where it's not like any other team has uh, jumped on him, but the Dolphins just jumped on uh, Jack Driscoll, so uh, possibly something that gets settled here in the coming days. 
and Isaiah Wynn brought back. So he was playing well until he got injured. So I'm sure he's going to be battling for that left guard spot now. Yeah, yeah, the, that would be the, uh, the the ideal scenario or what to expect. Um, uh, the Dolphins really liked what, what they had out of him, especially the way he won that spot. It was open competition last training camp, and Isaiah Wynn to, to be able to win that one, in one that was uh, really pretty open between uh, Liam Eikenberg, Robert Jones uh, was also in there. Uh, I know I'm missing someone that uh, Lesser Cotton was competing uh, at that spot. So, uh, so he won it to begin with. And then all those other guys, yeah, they still had to start at some point and uh, prove formidable in that role. But, uh, but Isaiah Wynn it w- it was the, that one to win it from the start. So that quadriceps injury was uh, unfortunate for him. Seven games in of what was a, a good year for him to cut that 2023 season short. But now he'll get a, another chance to pick up right where he left off. Is Keon Smith the next Kendall Lamb? Ah, I was that's I was a big, I was a big Keon fan in training camp, and uh, I thought he should make the roster, and I was right. He did make the roster, uh, and he even when he played, he had a little little bit of a playing time. He actually did all right. Um, this reminds me of the Kendall Lamb situation that they kind of liked Lamb, and so they kept him right away and developed him, and sure enough, he came in clutch. They've done the same thing with Keon Smith now, okay? This is a couple years now that they're going to be working with him. Uh, They must love something about him, dude. And if you watch him, he has grown. And so I'm actually, like, really intrigued for this training camp for Keon Smith because linemen are weird, bro. Don't ever judge a lineman when they switch teams or because they've been in – they were drafted here and they were bust here and then they go somewhere else. This is the weirdest position of all in the NFL. Guys find their way years in. Guys can't find their scheme finally or the right coach or whatever it is or just grow into the position mentally, physically. Lineman is the weirdest thing out there. And if you think you're going to project and predict how linemen are going to play, you're out of your mind and you should already see it with Kendall Lamb and Isaiah Wynn, and and watching uh, Austin Jackson, Liam Eikenberg, before this coaching staff with the other coaching staff, and now with this coaching staff, you should see that. So for me, Keon Smith is kind of like this wild card that could actually turn out to be a decent player for this team next year. Yeah, there's so many examples on the Dolphins' own roster, and uh, it was part of the reason why last offseason uh, Mike McDaniel was not ready to just give up on an Austin Jackson, on a Liam Eikenberg, on uh, all these guys. Uh, so uh, you need to give them time in a system. You need to give them uh, – it might be a new system that they need to be in. Uh, the Dolphins finally have continuity with now – it's going to be a third year of same head coach who is offensive mind, the same offensive coordinator, and then a second year with the same offensive line coach and Butch Berry, uh, although they were already running the, the, the system, uh, even when they had Matt Alpabom the, the year before, and it was a lot of continuity for the Jacksons, Eichenbergs, uh, yeah, Robert Jones, everyone else. Wild. The coaching style and the demands and all that is completely different. You know, that's a a vibe, everything, you know, from Barry to, to, um, who was the other guy? I forgot. Applebaum. Right. Yeah. Applebaum. It's completely different, dude. You know what I mean? So it's a player sense, the difference between Applebaum and Barry Mm -hmm. right away. But, and, and by the way, they've earned the benefit of the doubt for the first time in, 20 something, 30 years, 40 years, or whatever, an offensive line coaching staff has earned the benefit of the doubt with their players. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. You, you feel that. Well, what's it been? I mean, like a decade at least, right? Uh, more than that. <laughs> decades. Yeah. Seriously. Decades. I don't, I don't remember the last time that we had like a really good offensive coaching staff. It may be in Jimmy's early days or something. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while, dude. It's been a while. Really yeah. nice. Yeah. It, it is a nice feeling to know that, okay, I can I can trust this offensive staff and specifically the de- development of offensive linemen finally after what we saw last year. Different guys coming in due to injury and not missing too much of a step. But, you know, at some point it, it catches up to you when you have too many stack up. But uh, and, and maybe we saw it toward the end of the year, but – 
I'm really, this is kind of the first time where you have that feeling in a long time where, all right, I trust what's going on on this offensive line and they're going to develop. And a guy like Keon Smith, uh, who they liked last training camp, who made the team that they continued to develop, then you got to like that he's in good hands here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's young. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, it remind you know, the Jordan Brooks thing I'm really excited about because this is a guy that is, he's still young. You can actually have this guy for several years as a as a as a really good player for you. That's how it, this turns out to be a really good free agent pickup because it's something that you can actually build on. And with Keon, again, he's a baby. My God, if you develop it, you're going to have this guy for double digit years. So let's hope that Keon, who's kind of overlooked, might be one of those under the radar guys that. Uh, that ends up, uh, you know, really contributing. So what do you think happens now? Because they've kind of left themselves open, right? They can pick an offensive lineman. They can pick a D lineman, a tackle, a, an edge rusher. Hell, they could go for a receiver. They could even go for a corner again if they really want to go crazy and say, all right, we want to make sure we have as many corners as possible, you know, out there. Um, they've left themselves pretty flexible Overall, that they're not forced to take a pass rusher and they're not forced to take the offensive lineman. They kind of can go either way or maybe even a third spot in that first round. Yeah, I think that's how Chris Greer likes to go into a draft because he has this best player available model and mentality. So uh, he never wants to be forced into a position. And, and even if he were, even if the roster were such, I still think he wouldn't. I still, if he has a player at a position where he doesn't have a need, I still think, and he has him charted uh, much higher than a player at a position that, that he does need. That's the best one at that position. He would still go BPA uh, when that draft pick comes. So uh, I think that's how the Dolphins uh, every March, uh, especially in years where they are contending like this, will want to go into the draft where you're not drafting to fill a hole per se. You just want to draft whoever you think is the best player and then give that guy time to develop. It's not like he has to get thrown into a position where, where he has to contribute right away. And um, Hey, even like a Cam Smith was like that, hey, where you had your cornerback position set. And then even as different injuries occurred, you didn't get to see him on the field and Vic Fangio in the system and uh, whatever was happening there, that dynamic probably played a part in it, but now new coaching, uh, at the top of the defensive staff, see if you develop him. And then that's something where maybe that could turn into uh, a valuable asset for the Dolphins, even though he only played his 20 defensive snaps as a rookie, uh, as a second round pick. All right. Um, they reworked Chubb's deal to uh, open up $13.75 million. Uh, what do you think happens? Uh, is that to pay off some of these players and then you have some cap space for another free agent or two? Yeah, a lot of the uh, free agents that we already know about uh, haven't really been accounted yet as far as their cap numbers on if you look up on like the over the cap side on uh, spot rack or spot track. I don't know how you pronounce it, but um, spot track. OK, confirmed. It's spot track, um, yeah, especially uh, down here when we have uh, Eric Spolstra as a heat head coach. Yeah, <laughs> we should go with that pronunciation for sure. Uh, so uh, I think a lot of those contracts still have to be accounted for on the books. So that was sort of uh, some of the maneuvering, but it still leaves them a little bit more leeway for another uh, potential addition or two, or, you know, even some, some smaller contract guys uh, that they were going to pursue anyway. And then obviously big payday comes in June, the post June one uh, money from Xavier and Howard. But for now uh, you get a little bit more room to maneuver in, in free agency fit all the guys that you already did agree with. And, and then you'll also have the signing class that you need to, or the, the draft class that you need to sign. And uh, you can even wait once you draft them to, to do that in June and such. Uh, but then uh, also a nice chunk of change comes 18.5 million post June one. You surprised they didn't go to Tyreek for any cap space. Yeah. I mean, it, it's there available to them if they want. Uh, now I, I, there's, I, I'm always there's doing it. Tyreek. There was a lot going on with Tyreek as well. So, um, yeah, th there's things to, to think about. And even with Chubb, there was a lot to consider uh, there. Uh, with no, the no, 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 no. There, I get the injury there, but we're talking character now. It's, yeah, yeah. It, it's different. You know what I mean? I, you, I'll give you an example. You know what went on with Chubb? I, I, I kind of have a feeling already. 
One, you saw when he got injured, first of all, you saw Mike McDaniel walk over there and, you know, it was like, you know, he was remorseful about the whole thing and all that stuff. And now they've watched him all offseason rehab and how serious he's taking the rehab and how much progress he's making the rehab. And so you get to see the professionalism of a player at his worst moment. And then that makes you feel as an organization that you can trust him. You know, it's kind of like when the Dolphins, um, when they signed Brent Grimes off of an Achilles injury, people are like, well, how can you do that? And I go, no, 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 no. You, you don't know Brent Grimes. Brent Grimes is a quality individual. Forget about the wife stuff and all that. Brent Grimes is a quality individual, a pro's pro. And I said, don't worry about the Achilles injury. That's the kind of dude that takes injury the same way he takes the game. Serious and professional, and he's going to recover from it as as much as anybody could for 100%. And I think that's what it is with Chubb, that they know they have a quality human being and a professional, and so they're willing to take that chance because they trust his professionalism. When it comes to Tyreek Hill, there is no professionalism. You cannot trust him anymore. He has he has no credibility, all right? And so, really, you're in a really rock and a hard place. You, and by the way, Waddle's salary, his big salary, takes over in two years. Because once you give him the salary next year, you know how it is. It'll be a smaller salary, but then it, it goes up. That's when you need to move away from Tyreek after two seasons. This season coming up and next season, then you release him and Waddle takes over as the one. So I think it's a lot about Chubb's character. And then Tyreek, I mean, right now would not be smart to – guarantee any money to him and force you to keep him longer than two more years right now you better hope that he can stay away from trouble for the next two years yeah and you have jalen waddle's fifth year option uh that you uh right. that, that you'll, you'll sign up for uh obviously once that time comes later this offseason and uh it, yeah, uh, tyree kill well he has even mentioned uh year 10 you go back to last year he, he has mentioned year 10 as a uh, target or retirement date as well over time. How much does he stick with that, et cetera, et cetera. Then uh, that's to be determined. But um, okay, yeah, again, again, his word means shit. Well, yes. We've seen that from several <laughs> interviews. Definitely. You know, I'm sorry. It, it's what he's earned. Yeah, unfortunately, everything's a lie. Everything's a lie. And so yeah. Yeah, he still lied about the divorce filing. Right. Like, you think we're stupid or something? Just yeah, that, say what happened. That, that, that is, right. That's something that's easily verifiable via public records. Terry, we, we, we are we are aware. You lie about how it happened? Come on, dude. And yeah. you're really firing people for your actions? And that's why, really? like, like uh, I remember midseason, uh, they were coming off the bye week, and then Tyreek Hill, when, when he decided to get married with uh, uh, Kita Vaccaro, uh, and then explaining his thought process, he was saying that he's he's a changed man, this and that. And, and we were kind of uh, wondering, okay, what's it, what exactly is he talking about? Now, then you saw a lot of the news, because a lot of it was backlogged. A lot of the things that have happened were before that moment. But then even this latest incident, that was after that moment. This is this offseason. This is as recently as late January. What was it? It was, uh, yeah. I mean, it, so uh, that's after. after he said the first time he's going to be a changed man. And then you see him on the pivot, and he's still talking about that. Um, so, um, I mean, I hope for his sake it's true this time. Uh, just you don't know how many more times you can just expect to hear it from him uh, without seeing the action. Right. And uh, And from now on with Tyreek, it's about actions, not about words anymore. Yeah. So yeah, just stay yeah. out of, brother, stay out of trouble, dude. You know, just stay. Out. He has an anger issue. He has an anger issue. There's no doubt about, and I said that in the peer incident, I expressed it there. I said it, that they had to stop him two other times to attack that guy. So the, the IG model thing, I believe her more than him right now until I actually see the court case or something. You know, it's funny how there's, you know there's video of this. You know there's video of this. How come it never came out? I get mm. I guess nobody on her side filmed it. Anyway, so oh come on, dude. You know, I, it's just this is this is just out of control. And if you're the Dolphins, you cannot guarantee him any more money. I know you got to go. Uh, what do you got working on the Sun Sentinel? 
quickly. Yeah, um, more uh, just uh, these uh, new free agents getting to know them, uh, putting out stories. Uh, we're going to talk to Anthony Walker here pretty soon. So Miami Homecoming, uh, I'll write about him. And then uh, next week you go into owners meetings. So uh, th- that'll be fun. Uh, all the coaches yeah. talk. Is it a uh, beach? Orlando, Orlando. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll hear from all the coaches. So, uh, kind of the first time you hear from everyone about all their offseason moves in that first wave of free agency. All right. Follow them on Twitter at, at David Ferronis underscore and subscribe to the South Florida Sun Sentinel. David, as always, thank you, my brother. Yes, we'll sir. Talk thank you. Later on in the week. Appreciate you. There you go. And Welton Rayom. Ha ha ha. I know, you know what Jeff Welton is doing right now? He's buying a bunch of Bitcoin. And and any of the altcoins that have dropped, he's probably looking at. I know him now. He's probably looking at Van Archain. He's probably looking at a little Neutron. You know, Jeff Welt, Daniel Realm. They are just an absolute monster pair. That these are superstars. These are franchise players. Bam Adebayo has nothing on Jeff Welt and Daniel Realm. Daniel Realm is also a stunt pilot. I mean, this is just a cool group of guys. Jeff Welt's a big rocker too, loves music, an 80s guy also. So if you're into alternative music, he's into that also. 954-966-4646, bankruptcy, homeowner property damage, condo damage, criminal defense, business owner claims, commercial litigation, personal injury. Folks, more than ever, you need to hire the right lawyers now because our uh, governor didn't, you know, when he cut the new deals with the insurance companies, he put us at a disadvantage so make sure you hire the right lawyers because if you hire the wrong ones you are going to end up on the short end call welton realm and by the way the consultation is completely free okay so if you think you have a case you know you have a case whatever it is you want to explain it the conversation is free and then jeff will tell you you have a case you don't have a case one of our listeners this is how cool jeff is Okay, it's not good for their business, but I, I just want to tell you what kind of a human being Jeff is. Okay, one of our listeners called, explained their situation. Says, "I don't work this specific kind of law, but I do have a a I do know a friend that's in has a law firm and is very good at it, and he led him over to the right person at least. You know, that's that's class, man, and that's what you're going to deal with with Daniel Rayom and Jeffrey Welt." They know how to get it done. Jeff Welt and Daniel are awesome, dude. 954-966-4646. Save it on that cell phone just in case. You may not need it now, but you might need it in a week, a month, a year from now. And you're going to go, hey, what's that? Who are those guys that O talks about? And you will have it on your phone already. Welt and Rayom. 954-966-4646. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.